I met Bowie back in 1973 when he was producing Lulu. He was a weird Englishman with his weird English look, and I was a New York kid, you know. I had a whole career based at the Apollo Theater with all the heaviest R&B acts. This guy, to me, was a nobody. You know, the Spiders from Mars. What the hell is a spider from Mars? I mean, that's a stupid name. No, he didn't impress me at all. I just liked him as being this English dude that was always saying, yeah, man. David doesn't tour because an album comes out, because the record company says that they want more backing on an album, uh, because sales are down, nothing like that. He does a tour because he's been home, he's done other things, and now he's climbing the walls, and he wants to go out, and he's got an idea that has been burning in his head. David and I met at Bromley Technical High School. I'd just gone to the school for the first year, and he was already in the third or fourth form, already in my father's class, because my father was the head of the art department there. He was younger than me. He was about, let's see, he must have been about 12, 13 when I was, in, I was 15. But at the time, we in the art block, that used to be like where all the musos hang out. You know, we used to bring our guitars to school. My father would leave the art block stairs open at lunch times and we'd smuggle the guitars in because the art block was all stone. So it was a wonderful echo, built-in echo chamber. So we used to sit there and sing uh, Every Day and Peggy Sue and all that. No, no, that's not Peter Frampton. No, 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 please. I won't allow anyone. Can I get out to Peter Frampton? Oh, OK. Hello, baby. Hello. When we weren't painting, we were playing guitar, and he used to come in over there and play over there, and he was just dynamite. I mean, he already at 13, he was a great guitarist. I saw this dreadful stuff happening to him in the 70s. It was all getting lost, that he was a great guitarist. He was suddenly a pop hero, and then he was a face, and he hated that. Last year, it became apparent that Peter was really back on the trail again, and I thought, that's the guitarist I'd really like to work with on this next album. Thank you. Coming to this album, I approached it from how I used to feel about bands when I start. I always go back to it. When you get lost, you go back to point one. And so I approached the whole deal from how, what used to excite me about being in a band, and, and it just goes back to the guitar again. And so it became a guitar-oriented album. And as I was writing and feeling out the material, I realised it was just a tremendous album to be touring and so the whole the whole thing meshed together and i put the amount of energy that i needed in to a rock album to to really make it happen on stage bang, bang. Bang, bang. Sun don't shine. Thank you very much. Goodbye. David called me up and he says, Carlos, I want you to come to Switzerland to do a new album. We had the most fun doing this album that we ever had because it was really coming back to just us and not all the outside influences of being in New York at the power station in this gigantic studio and having ex-ex musicians coming in to do so. So it was very, very much us, you know, which was, which was great. I made demos of everything before we went in and I played them to everybody and I said, I want it to sound exactly like this, but better. <laughs> when David comes to you with the tapes and stuff like that, demos and things like that, they're all very rough. Rough, 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 real rough. It produced the kind of sound that I really felt was me because I was playing some of the stuff on it and I was kind of giving it some kind of foundation on either the keyboards or a particular kind of rhythm guitar that I play, which is not like Carlos's, but it's, it works, you know? I mean, it's not great, but it works. In the studio, David knows exactly what he wants. I wouldn't say that he's over-demanding or anything. He, he will suggest and then leave it, leave it up to you. To, he's got you in there because he knows what you can do, and he thinks he can point you in the direction he'd really like you to go. So I think he... It's, but it was, we had a laugh. I mean, we really did. It was uh, ten days of uh, good times, which is when good music is made. The first thing that you notice in the difference is David's voice. 
He sounds marvelous. He sounds refreshed. He sounds, he's singing very high as he did before, as opposed to the very low baritone that he always has. This lends itself towards us being able to have a different, higher energy music. Change the cycle.